very timely. War and sports. Welcome, James. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. I first arrived in South Africa in 1989. I was 19 and I had a thirst for adventure and there was war everywhere. I haven't done my research very well. On the eastern border, there was 17 years of civil war in Mozambique and on the west, there was the Angola War, which was Russian-backed rebels, uh, trained Cuban pilots flying MiG jets. It's not the average Bush war that people think it was, but it's pretty serious stuff. Uh, the mandatory uh, national service for all South African white males was two years. So this is not generally two years flying to desk somewhere. This is pretty hardcore. They were going off to Angola. Now, in South Africa, it was a really interesting time because apartheid was coming to an end. And this is very new and very frightening news. However, this created a power struggle, for want of a better word, who was going to take over. Now, the Zulus was uh, led by Mangasuch Bujalezi, who was head of the Encarta Freedom Party, and the Kozas is Mandela's tribe, and this is the thing, is that F.W. de Klerk, the president, announced the year after I got there that Mandela was to be released, which was just fantastic news. But the violence was escalating, and it got really bad. And there were gun battles in the streets, and they used to throw people off of commuter trains because they had the wrong allegiance. And there were a lot of car hijackings, and the gun culture, you think you've got a problem with gun culture here? There you get shot for your car. And this is a scar from a car hijacking that I've managed, luckily enough, to walk away from. But one thing that was interesting for me is that it was like I was a spectator, because I'm not an Africana, and even though I'm a white guy, and, and I was really young and I didn't really want to obey any of the rules. So I went to Soweto, which is the biggest black township in Johannesburg. I went to a football game, a soccer game, and this is see, now soccer is soccer is the black sport and rugby is the white sport. That's how, just just how it was, and so I'm standing there in Soweto City, which is the football stadium. Um, one white guy and a hundred thousand people are standing <coughs> around me, and it's the Orlando Pirates and the Kaiser Chiefs, the two biggest sub-Saharan African um, teams, and it was just so overwhelming and I was wearing a Chelsea shirt so that, that identified me as, as neutral and, I, and I, I'm from Chelsea so I was kind of sort of accepted. I ended up playing with a lot of kids in the townships on the weekends quite often and so I got a sense of you know what, what life was really like as opposed to sitting back and watching it on TV or reading the newspapers. Now Mandela realized that there were a number of opportunities with this because South Africa had been in isolation because of sanctions for many, many years. And one of the, one of the big sports in South Africa is rugby. And I, you can probably guess what's coming now. You may have seen the film Invictus with Morgan Freeman as Mandela and Matt Damon as Pinar the captain. So when South Africa was awarded to be the host nation of the Rugby World Cup, President Mandela took it upon himself to use this to try and unite the country, because the whole the whole team is white apart from one guy, Chester Williams, who was an outside center, an amazing rugby player. And so, the the World Cup happened, and it was New Zealand South Africa in the final. And not only was President Mandela wearing the green and gold colours of the rugby team and the cap. He was wearing the number six shirt, which was the captain's shirt. Now, Francois Pina is Africana, right? like a lot of the team, and this is a really big deal. And he saw this as a way of uniting this, this newly called Rainbow Nation. And South Africa won. South Africa won the World Cup, and he presented it to uh, the captain. And so I'm one of 60,000 people in that stadium. And what I didn't know is that 2.3 billion people were watching it live. Mm. 
And at that time, there's only 5.7 billion people on the planet. So this is, this is quite amazing. And it was, it was, it, it, it's, it's so difficult to describe this moment. This is a totally life-changing moment for me, and uh, let alone the country, and maybe even the world, because it changed the way that people see how sport can overcome. Uh, it's like a level playing field, you know, for sworn enemies. Anyway, there's a history lesson. This is what happened two months ago. In November, South Africa won the World Cup again in Japan. This time they beat England in the final. I'm not bitter. <laughs> <laughs> and the captain was a guy called Sia Kolozi. He's a black South African rugby player. He was born in 1991, the year that apartheid ended. And after the victory, he said, since I have been alive, I have never seen South Africa like this. With all the challenges we have, the coach said to us, we're no longer playing for ourselves, we're playing for the people back home. And we appreciate all the support from the people in the taverns, in the shabines, on the farms, and the homeless people. They had screens everywhere throughout the land. Thank you so much. We love you, South Africa. And we can achieve anything if we work together.